Mr Whitford. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. My colleagues have highlighted just some of the negative impacts of Brexit on individuals, businesses, universities and public services in Scotland. There simply are no real Brexit opportunities or sunlit uplands. So does it come as a surprise to the Secretary of State that a poll last year showed 69% of Scottish voters want to rejoin the EU? Um, well, Mr Speaker, first of all, may I welcome the Honourable Lady to her new role. Uh, may I also thank the Honourable Member for Paisley and Renfrewshire South for uh, her positive engagement in the role previously. Uh, regarding the benefits of Brexit, I mean, opinion polls come and go. We've seen that. We've seen, we've seen, we've seen only we've seen 59% of Scots wanting to remain in the United Kingdom last week. I noticed that opinion poll wasn't quoted. But what I would say about the benefits of Brexit, we can make our own trade deals, and we've made 71 to date. The SNP have never seen a trade deal they liked. They've never voted for a trade deal in the European Parliament. They've never voted for a trade deal in this Parliament. Benefits. We've left it the hated common fisheries policy. We had an excel- I know the Honourable Lady is very keen on the health sector. We had an accelerated vaccine programme rollout. We had, a, we had a fast and decisive response to the war in Ukraine. And we're able to make our own laws, one of which is precision breeding, which, again, we would like the Scottish Government to support. Sunrise. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker, and I thank the Secretary of State for his warm welcome. I have to point out, June Rain, the head of the MHRA, has said innumerable times the accelerated rollout was under European Medicines yep. Agency. Yeah. 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 With the Labour Party having now lashed itself to the mast of the floundering Brexit ship, yep. mm-hmm. does the Secretary of State at least recognise the only route back to the EU for Scotland <coughs> Is as an independent country. Yeah, yeah. So you stay. Well, Mr. Speaker, the, the, the deficit in Scotland is considerably higher than the three percent, which is the Maastricht criteria. That is not the route back. The common, the currency is a problem as well, because as we know, the the the, the Bank of England is the bank of last resort, and uh, to the, there would have to be a new currency in Scotland followed by membership of the EU. There's no desire in Scotland to have membership of the EU. I believe. I believe that Scots, when they stop and when they stop and look at the detail, whether it's on whether it's on their pensions, whether it's on trade, whether it's on whether it's on currency, they stop, they think about it, and they know that their home is the United Kingdom.